Yeah, welcome everybody. Just to start with, yeah, that's me, Olga Pilates from Ulm. What is that? No abbreviation. It's a city in Germany located in between Stuttgart and Munich. And what it is, is it famous for? It's the birthplace of Albert Einstein and it has the highest church tower of the world. So that now you can relocate me in a bit more detail. So what do I want to tell you in five minutes? I think I will make some highlights on measuring interception in adults and I will um, pass to the topic about measuring these processes in children and adolescents too. And I think uh, Oliver Cameron asked what are these processes for? I think they at least interact with health related variables and that might be a reason why they exist in such a detail too. And I will end with something like open questions like everyone has here in the auditorium. So first of all, um, Oliver Cameron had the idea of boxes and I like this idea too. So from uh, the work of Sarah Gafinkel and Hugo Critchley, three suggestions for such boxes. When you talk about interoceptive processes, we talk about interoceptive accuracy whenever we use a, an objective task to measure something and especially the heart was in the focus of a lot of research I did. We talk about subjective beliefs, symptoms, self-report as measured by question Wolf Mehling, I think we'll talk about that in more detail. And also another uh, level which I found very interesting to think of is the correspondence between how accurate I think I am in detecting something and my confidence in this judgment. But there might be other boxes too. I think it's interesting and um, well, most of you will know that a lot of tests use the heart and the heartbeats in kind of tracking or detecting tasks, but there are other, of course, other modalities that are also very important, like breathing, for example, to pass the ball back, but of course also the gastric modality. And I think one point I want to make at this stage of the talk is that indeed looking at one system might be really not enough to understand the full picture, so I would somehow like to promote the idea that we try to look in various systems and also to focus on why or why not there is some interaction or maybe there is some dissociation but might be then specific for certain psychopathological syndromes too. What I also want to introduce here is another kind of box maybe, especially when it comes to the um, processing of heartbeats, the so-called heartbeat evoked potential. Some of you will also have dealt with that topic too. I think it's another possibility to assess more automatic processing of cardiac information. It's related to the EEG, which is then average contingent to the ECG. And I think it's interesting to know that indeed the amplitude of these potential is at least to some degree um, associated with interoceptive accuracy and is modulated by attention. And why I also introduce this point here is because I think you can also assess this amplitude or this processing in children as done in one work so far where this was assessed in children with sleeping disorder. Why is that important? I think because it's related to health-related issues such as the body weight. So here data from a big sample of 1,650 children aged 7 to 11. And you see some kind of very typical, almost normal distribution of this heartbeat perception score. And you see also starting one year in longitudinal fascia, and you see that indeed there is some dissociation in the accuracy of detecting the heartbeat in the uh, normal weight and overweight children and I think it's very in interesting to look on this developmental issues to better understand how that might interact. It's a um, um, result that is also found in adults so that obese or overweight participants have lower interoceptive accuracy score. And I also think it's important for the broad topic of emotions, but beyond the emotions, also the regulation of emotions. So using, for example, a reappraisal as one strategy to downregulate one's own arousal, we see some advantages in participants who are rather good 
in um, perceiving or detecting their heartbeats accurate. This is also the case if you use other paradigms that introduce or elicit negative feelings, such as empathy for pain pictures or this uh, paradigm to feel excluded or ostracized. So to sum up, I think it's important that we also assess methods that might change interoceptive processes such as TMS, for example, and to prove that this is a valid aspect we can use. And I think it's also very important to develop new tasks targeting children and also very small children in future. And that's the point I want to make, and I'll stop here.